Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Soumya Pelle and for today's story we have reached Andhra Pradesh's Guntur at the campus of Sri Maharshi Research Institute of Vedic Technology. It is the first Vedic Technology Institute in the country and it aims to take knowledge from the Vedas and apply it in modern technology. Stay with us for the next few minutes to understand the kind of projects and research that is happening in the institute. ABS Shastri or Nano Shastri as he is fondly known in the institute started Sri Viti in 1999. He started this institute with no scientific learning, only depending on his knowledge of the Vedas and ancient scriptures. 25 years later, Sri Viti is a recognized institute under the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research is an external PhD center for IITs, has two patents to its name and is collaborating with top scientific institutes including DRDO and ISRO. So we named this institute because the science part of uh, uh, our ancient Indian scriptures somehow it was uh, popularized uh, in the uh, academic, academic part, it was popularized. But only part of this uh, technology part, what we call technology is a product or technology. So the product development and technology development, these two parts were not taken by anyone. So what we thought is uh, the idea, the objective of this institute to how to develop the product as well as the technology, right? Application development, technology development, all these things to be uh, carried out from the our own ancient Indian knowledge. So the, this institute established in 1999, and we are focusing on the uh, earlier in early days we focused on. Uh, product development like uh, metals, alloys, nanometals, nanometal oxides and uh, nanoceramics. So what is this uh, development of nanometals and metal oxides and ceramics called nanotechnology? So this nanotechnology is well versed uh, technology, well established technology in our ancient uh, uh, scientific treatises. So we developed all these nanomaterials under nanotechnology and not only that, not only product development, we also developed application development. So how to use, how to replace the existed um, technology in various industrial uh, sectors like uh, fabric, textiles. So we developed uh, antimicrobial textile and uh, one more hydrophobic smart textiles, lotus effect. So no need to wash. And uh, antimicrobial is uh, as uh, we are all aware about the corona, uh, the COVID pandemic situation. So due to the uh, microbial virus, all these effects, uh, public uh, at, a, at a large suffered uh, and uh, by the God grace, now we came out. But uh, hygiene, hygiene and uh, uh, both uh, comfort, we focused on hygiene and comfort and we developed uh, the antimicrobial fabric technology. The scientists here believe that Indian scriptures have all the answers that modern science is looking for. Shastri claims that the Pushpaka Vimana in Ramayana showed the knowledge of aeronautics, the Kauravas in Mahabharata were test tube babies and that King Bhoja in Samaranga Sutradhara wrote how mechanically moving robots could be made. 
I have with me today uh, Shriram KS, who is also a scientist at SriVT. He's just 25 years old, uh, and we are going to be talking to him about his experience at the institute and what made him join the institute. Uh, thank you for speaking to us, uh, Shriram. Uh, you are just 25, considered to be one of the modern kids. If you could tell our viewers a little bit about your education and your background, and also tell us why did you decide to join SriVT? So, uh, hello everyone. So, myself, Sriram. I am from a traditional science background, that is the conventional science. So, uh, it's been al almost three years since I joined uh, this organization. And I, before that, I did my master's in nanobiotechnology from Amrita Center for Nanosciences in Kochi, where I uh, graduated with a gold medal. Right after my college, uh, you know, I, uh, I was just looking for a job, just like any of my fellow graduates, and most of them were interested in pursuing a PhD, which is what I was also having as an option. But at the same time, I was also very fed up with an aspect like, you know, like you keep working for papers and publications and then you work on your next paper, next publication. That aspect of science is something that I personally despise. So what I thought is like I can, I should be in a company where which does product and research, you know, like you do research, you make it into a product, you make sure it reaches to the public. Something like that is what I was personally looking for. And uh, through my, you know, like uh, one of my referral, I got to know about uh, Dr. A.B. Shastri, who's the founder of SRIVT. Uh, so he said, uh, you know, like, you keep saying nano, nano, and he keeps saying nano, nano, why don't you guys meet? So uh, at first, when I heard about SRIVT and the works that are being done at SRIVT, uh, I was very much, you know, in uh, a mild state of denial that, you know, like, I know how it is being done there and somebody is saying they are doing it in a different way and I'm not even sure if it works but I came with an open mind you know, like this might not be the only way to do it say let's let me just go see what they do and interact more and that is how I started interacting and as I started interacting more uh, it became very clear that you know uh, it is a very good possible there is a very good possibility that it's not just the traditional, the conventional science that we learn and that we do is the way of doing. There are other ways to do it. So having this kind of an open mind is what I suggest to all the youngsters. I'm not saying like completely believe in this or believe in that. The idea is to have an open mind. So don't deny the possibilities what I would uh, give to the young people. My personal background, I come from a family which has always taught me that reasoning is important. So anything that they want to get done from me, they give me a reason. This is why you do it, I do it. So as long as I have an understanding of what I do, I'm pretty good at it. And I'm also more interested in doing it. So when I heard about CVT and the activities that they do, I started questioning. I started like, how does this work? Does it work or at all? So once I start interacting with Sastri Garu and the research that is happening here, they provide the same results that we do in the traditional lab. The methods are different, the approach is different, but it is essentially the same output. Then after joining this institute, I understood that the way of approach is somewhat similar to what we modern scientists do. You do literature studies, you take a topic, you do a literature survey and literature study and then you have your own idea or the design of experiment, you perform the experiment, you test for the result, you optimize it, which is exactly what they follow, what we follow here. Except the literature that we follow is mostly of the Grandas and Sastras and we also look at modern uh, literatures to get a complete understanding of what is actually happening in the process and not just understanding what is happening in the process but also in a way to, uh, you know, like apply it in a way that we are getting the better result. Like, you know, so, for example, we are creating copper nanoparticles to traditional root as well as modern root. So, what we do is we try to take the aspects of traditional root. You know, traditional root uh, synthesis nanoparticles were highly oxidation resistant. Right? But at the same time, the ones that we did with modern root, despite using strong capping agents, we were not able to that kind, uh, achieve that kind of stability. Uh, the particle size for example, it is better in the modern science, but not in the traditional science. So what we did, we understood what is the capping agent that is, you know, helping with the stability in the traditional science. We applied it in the modern science. Now we have a copper nanoparticles that are extremely stable in room temperature. We just dry it, uh, prepare it. We just dry it out in the air, open air. And the particles have been, you know, stable for more than three, four months. 
and we have sent sample to some testing laboratories and they have lost the sample and they received the sample after 6-7 months. When they gave the result after 6-7 months it was found to be very stable. We thought the stability would have been you know like uh, out of spec but it was very much in spec. So this is the kind of uh, study when I say we involve traditional and modern science. This is something that uh, we do. The institute's aim is to create an army of young scientists who will be proud of India's ancient knowledge and traditions. Shastri has dedicated his life to this cause. The aim of India's first Vedic Technology Institute is to integrate the traditional knowledge of the Vedas with the modern science knowledge that we have attained. But the road towards achieving this goal might not be as easy as it sounds. You were with Soumya Pillai for The Print.